Hello to all YouTubers and welcome back to another update of this 90 gallon build process. Now this is day number 10 here, uh, minus the two and a half weeks I spent in Montreal. So we're going to call this one a day number 10 had I not gone to Montreal, it would have actually been day number 10. And the system is completely plumbed, fully operational and ready to go. Now I'm going to cover here lots of, of changes that I've done to the overall system, including uh, some equipment that I've purchased here, a refugium light. I will do a full detailed review on it. I may get a second refugium light for this overall sump. Um, you, we're gonna we're gonna get closer to the sump and the overall system some some questions I want to answer that were asked and uh, people uh, are a little confused about the overall system also added a four fan unit here made by a company named Azu which is located in the back we're gonna talk about that as well and we're gonna talk a little bit about the electricity here now we're gonna start with uh, the overall sump here we're gonna get closer uh, to the sump Let's grab a seat here and um, if you have watched my video review on this sump refugium you will notice that the overall skimmer is completely in a different position now in the in the video I had the skimmer facing um, the, the left side of the wall in this particular case I've gone ahead and removed the piece of PVC that was uh, making the water, uh, the T that was pointing the water uh, facing down and just simply uh, position the protein skimmer in this manner uh, facing the output of the protein skimmer towards the uh, filter socks. Now it was important for me to do this uh, and I don't know if I'm actually going to um, run the system in this manner. Like I said, it's gonna take a while. I really need to look at the overall system and how it works to really get into detail and cover all the facts here and uh, get some sort of way to finally run this sump refugium. For the time being, it's gonna stay in this position. Uh, the protein skimmer is actually pulling in water and everything is working well. And uh, having the output facing the socks is actually preventing a lot of micro bubbles. There actually is no micro bubbles in my reef aquarium now the socks are going to stay there momentarily and that's because I'm, I'm ordering a live rock and it should come here on Thursday I actually wanted to order the live sand first but the retailer did not have um, you know the, the sand that I'm looking for and so it was going to be on back order so instead I've decided to order the live rock now I will do a detailed video on live rock versus dry rock. I will also cover uh, the differences between the two. Major, major differences. Uh, dry rock can never be as good as uh, live rock. We're going to talk about that uh, unless it's seeded with live rock. I mean, if you take a dry rock out of your uh, marine aquarium system after a year and that's the only rock that you have in there and you smell it, it's going to smell like salt water. But live rock, if you take it out of the ocean and you smell it, it's going to smell like the ocean. We're going to cover that in detail. So this is the way that I'm running the Sumperfugium as we speak now. And so um, some changes here with the plumbing. Now these gray tubing, uh, flexible tubing here, uh, if you recall from the previous videos, was really long and uh, some circles and everything needed to be done in order for me to plumb it. I've since corrected that. I've actually gone out and to Dr. Foster's and Smith and purchased um, some uh, fittings here, which I cut to size. I will cover that in a future video review of these wet dry um, flexible tubing here. Uh, you know, there's gonna be a full review on that. And I actually have another one in the closet which I needed for someone else's system and uh, coming up in a future video will be a review on that. Now, some new features added here, of course, are this macro glow um, sump refugium lighting here. Now I'm gonna turn it on here so you can see the differences. The only lighting that's on as we speak is my 10,000K lighting here, uh, metal halides. You can see that it, it, there's no actinics on and there is a blue hue to the overall water but when we come closer here and we turn on the refugium light you're gonna see that there is 
a different yellowing color to the overall water. Let me see if I can back up. And that's because um, you definitely want to lean towards the 65K, 67K type of lighting for macroalgae, which is closer to that of the color of the sun. And um, I may add a second unit of this. It'll certainly fit here because this is a really large refugium area. I mean, we're talking uh, uh, 13 inches by 15 inches, and I can easily take this light and just slide it backwards and add a second one. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, this macro glow light was about uh, 50 bucks, and you can, uh, you know, if you have any questions on it, you can definitely hit me up. Uh, post it down below and I'll give you some instructions on where I got it or how you can get it. Now also here is the flow switch for the Reef Keeper light. Now there's a lot of things that I need to cover about the Reef Keeper light. One of them being that I will do a full video review on it once again. Uh, chances are I might actually delete uh, the older video and remake this video and that's because um, before and in that video I mentioned that the Reef Keeper light was slightly the Neptune's Apex Aqua Controller was slightly better than the Reef Keeper light system and that was because the Apex allows you to easily uh, shut off and turn on equipment from your computer away from the system that's no longer the case uh, the Reef Keeper light system has come up with a new firmware update and you get yourself the net module and you'll be able to do that so both are hand in hand equal with each other uh, it'll come down to price which one is cheaper and uh, which one brings you more equipment and in this case the Reef Keeper Elite which is five hundred dollars comes with more equipment than that of the Neptune's Apex Aqua Controller which is five hundred dollars and comes with less equipment so another thing that I wanted to cover here are these two PC4's now uh, some people have been confused here with the fact that they're you know they sent me messages uh, telling me I can't believe a one electrical socket is powering uh, the overall system and for me to have all this equipment hooked up to that socket that is not the case guys you gotta understand that these PC4 surge protectors are some of the best money can buy I mean we're talking each one of these is eighty dollars a piece so if the system were to overheat, of course the surge protector is going to shut off the system before um, the heat reaches the electrical socket. So I mean, some people, I don't know what it is, they just completely don't understand what a Reef Keeper light system is. It is everything to you. If you purchase a Reef Keeper light system, you will be getting a controller, you will be getting, uh, you know, the best surge protectors money can buy the apex um the neptune's apex aqua controller can do the same you know but please don't forget that the electrical equipment is hooked up to these surge protectors before it's hooked up uh to the wall so definitely wanted to cover that now back to um the float switch here now this float switch is about 25 bucks and it's the, the one that belongs to the Reef Keeper light system you can purchase it on their website or uh, many online retailers have it Marine Depot uh, you can definitely find it in many places a bulk reef supply also carries uh, these and I actually got this one from bulk reef supply now Reef Keeper light system was very smart here what they did was that in order for you to hook up any of these you need a adapter and that's what these red and black wires are which uh, I had to wire to the flow switch you know in order for me to get it to work but if you have a float switch or you know on a different uh, system or something and you would like to use it for the reef keeper light system you can definitely do it don't buy this overall unit uh, simply get yourself the black and white wire uh, adapter here and just wire it to the other float switch and it'll work just as well now another thing that I wanted to quickly cover here of this overall system is the fact that there is a carpet beneath this sump refugium here a uh, very important for me for the simple fact that some of these pumps here can really cause uh, lots of vibration and um, some of these pumps as a matter of fact all of them have here 
uh, some sort of an adhesive pad below to minimize some of that vibration. But it will still make some vibration to the overall sumperfugium. And for that reason, I've gone ahead and added uh, this. I've carpeted the bottom area. Now, this particular carpet here, uh, they sell it at Home Depot. It's like $12 to $14 for a big piece of it. And it's rubber in the bottom. So it'll actually prevent some of the water from uh, traveling down into the stand, uh, making it even more safer to use. Now, the the not the calcium. The phosphate reactor uh, needs to be hooked up, but it's sitting here um, with the overall length of this sumperfugium, which is 39 inches. I still have eight plus inches left on this side of the stand, uh, allowing me to easily hook up a reactor, uh, maybe a calcium reactor in the future. But for the time being, the carbon is going to be ran in this media stage here. Let's see if we could take a look how long this sump actually is from front to back. It's 15 inches. And in there are two large bags of carbon that, you know, the water has to travel through the bags into the last stage before it gets traveling over uh, to the main display. And I'm just going to be using one reactor now. In this case, it's going to be uh, the phosphate reactor. Now, let's 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 talk a little bit more about the electricity here now the chiller here is hooked up but let me let, let me discuss something here about the chiller which is important too uh, some of the questions that were asked about um, the electricity involved how much power the overall system is going to be pulling out of one electrical socket um, the great thing about the reef keeper light system is that it will tell you how many amps the overall system is pulling and I can tell you that it is like three to five amps on a 20 amp um, circuit breaker that's located in this living room and we're gonna walk over to the circuit breaker boxes I really want to cover this but if there's one piece of equipment here that's really pulling in a lot of power it would be the chiller for that reason I've actually taken the chiller and connected it to the output or the electrical socket that has an individual circuit breaker in this living room that is made for an air conditioner. So we're gonna get up here, see if I can show you that the wire runs behind the couch here and goes all the way around. I don't know, we were eating some food and stuff there. But here, by the window, you can easily have um, an air conditioner in this living room. Now, this is a brand new, a relatively newer uh, house and stuff so it does have an electrical socket that's made individually we're gonna walk over here and you can see that the chiller is actually hooked up here you can see it right there so the, the chiller is being powered individually and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna walk over to the wall here, see if I can get the lights to this hallway. But I really wanted to show this to you guys. Okay, so here is the circuit breaker box. We're gonna open it up quickly. Now, in this case here, uh, this is a, 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 a very large house. I mean, it has four bedrooms and two bathrooms, but the living room alone you can see the living room outlet is down here, which is actually 15 amps. But there is also a 20 amp here that's called living room AC. And that's exactly what I've done. The, um, I'm going to walk over here again to the tank. But the, um, the chiller, the chiller is hooked up on its own individual outlet. Everything else is hooked up. Um, to that one outlet in the back under a certain uh, under a separate uh, circuit breaker now lastly I wanted to cover this we're gonna walk over to the other side of the tank now I wanted to cover uh, the fan here which is made by a zoo or whatever you call this company here and let me show you guys how I've gone ahead and installed this now the fan has been positioned here. 
Now, the great thing about the way I set up the system is that it does have a board uh, back there and um, it, it, you know, before it reaches the other end, there's about a one inch gap there. And so these um, fans were positioned here continuously uh, bringing, I don't know if you could see that. I don't know if there's much light here, but um, it's definitely working out uh, pretty good. And, and I'm happy about that. So overall, the uh, system is completely and utterly uh, safe to use. It's running, it's working properly. Um, I hope that I've covered a lot of the details. Many more videos to come. Got so many videos to do, guys. Uh, be patient because I am working and dealing with my girl and uh, you know other things and you know be patient because there will absolutely be a number of like 40 different videos that are going to be coming out including lots of product reviews so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video many more videos to come this is new york Steelo signing out peace